Thomas William Hiddleston is an English actor. He is the recipient of several accolades, including a Golden Globe Award and a Laurence Olivier Award, in addition to nominations for two Primetime Emmy Awards and a Tony Award. He came to international attention when cast as Loki in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, appearing in Thor, The Avengers, Thor, The Dark World, Thor, Ragnarok, Avengers, Infinity War, and Avengers, Endgame. In 2021 he reprised his role as Loki in the Disney Plus series Loki. Today we bring you 15 interesting facts about Tom Hiddleston that you might not know about. So let's get started. Tom's great-grandfather was a baronet. Hiddleston never considered himself part of the British aristocracy. There were no representatives of any ancient surnames in his family, like Benedict Cumberbatch. Nevertheless, in 1921, Tom's maternal great-grandfather, Sir Edmund Hoyle Wesley, received the title of baronet, inherited. During the First World War, the successful English entrepreneur Wesley managed to organize the delivery of food to the front, and the British Crown appreciated his activities. Tom's father was also a businessman, who was born into an almost impoverished Scottish family, but managed to grow to the director of a large pharmaceutical company. Tom called his childhood ideal. Thanks to his great-grandfather's title, his father's money and his own tenacity, Hiddleston had the opportunity to study in the best schools in the UK. He began gnawing the granite of science at the Dragon School in Oxford, and then enrolled at Eton College for boys. By the way, Crown Prince William studied there. However, Tom calls his childhood ideal for other reasons. I had the best friends in the world and the most beautiful family in the world. My father still remains my idol. And if I achieved at least something, it was only thanks to him. It was necessary for my dad not to be ashamed of me. At the same time, my mother is the source of my strength. Together with her sisters, she taught me courage and kindness, a rare combination today. Hiddleston was casting for the role of Thor. When Tom was invited to audition for the film by Kenneth Branagh, no one thought he could play Loki. He was supposed to get the role of Thor. Hiddleston was so confident of success that he even began to build muscle mass. However, the producer saw a negative charm in him, and invited him to the casting for the second time, offering to read the antihero's remarks. After these tests, everything fell into place. True, for filming, the actor had to sit on a diet for a long time. The director wanted the cunning Loki to be agile, flexible and dexterous. It took a lot of effort, because the weight gained for the role of Thor did not want to go away. Tom is confident in his resemblance to Loki. In several of his interviews, Hiddleston said that he could not call his character an absolute villain. He's not angry, he just makes the wrong decisions. Loki is lonely and ambitious, and besides, he is sure that his family has deceived and betrayed him, and this is the main source of his anger. So his motivation is quite clear and understandable to me. Moreover, I have endowed Loki with some of my traits. I would even say that this guy is my shadow side. By playing it, I can show my personality without hurting anyone. So Loki is my legal opportunity to be a bad guy. He believes that the fee is not the most important thing when choosing a role. By agreeing to take part in a new project, Hiddleston tries not to think about how much he will be paid for it. I've never done a movie for the money. Yes, I have had a lot of films that were paid pretty generously, but I chose them because I liked the material. For example, I was sent the script for Night Administrator, right after the release of Thor 2, and during the filming of Crimson Peak by Guillermo del Toro. That is, at that moment my financial situation was such that I could not be filmed anywhere for another 10 years. But I rarely played modern heroes in films. The Night Administrator shocked me with its realism and multi-layered nature, so I immediately agreed. For me it was a completely new experience, and money had nothing to do with it. Tom is surprised when he is called sexy. Immediately after the release of Thor in 2011, the cunning Loki was named one of the sexiest villains in the history of world cinema. But Tom Hiddleston only smiles at compliments of this kind. I am not a connoisseur of male sexuality and I understand exclusively female sexuality. On the other hand, I grew up in the company of two sisters who constantly sang praises to me. They praised my height, voice, figure. Therefore, even as a teenager, I was a confident guy. But at the same time, I always understood that it was stupid to take the words of the sisters seriously. 
They are my relatives, so they will admire me, even if I turn into Quasimodo. So when I was declared sexy, I turned a deaf ear to it. I guess I'm used to not paying attention to such labels. Tom Hiddleston is not afraid of explicit scenes. Despite his indifference to the epithets, sexy, Hiddleston easily agrees to appear completely naked. However, with one condition. I have to understand that the sex scene is necessary for this film, that it helps the character to reveal himself, to prove himself and so on. Otherwise, sex on the screen is just pornography. Besides, I was brought up in European cinema, there, nudity is not considered something forbidden. Many titled actors, much more famous than me, have dared to act in such explicit scenes as I have never had before. Therefore, I do not see anything terrible in this and, by the way, I think that erotica is also art. In his free time from work, Tom likes to do nothing. Colleagues and friends consider Hiddleston a notorious workaholic, and he accepts this compliment very willingly. I'm really a workaholic maniac. For me to jump up at dawn and rush without a break until late at night is quite a usual thing. But when suddenly there is an opportunity to just lie down, I always use it. I love living with my parents, wandering around the house, staring out the window, aimlessly leafing through the newspaper. This kind of idleness is very relaxing. Tom Hiddleston loves to plan ahead. Tom does have several traits that bring him closer to Loki. For example, he knows how to think several moves ahead and tries not to lose his head even in the most stressful situations. I am a human plan and I always plan everything clearly, I can and love to do it. If something breaks down, then you are unlikely to make me panic. I know for sure that panic does not lead to anything good. True, before I literally rushed about if plans suddenly changed, but then I made it a rule to stay calm. Tom was considered the perfect candidate for the role of James Bond. After the release of the series, The Night Administrator, fans and fans have come to the conclusion that the best James Bond could not be imagined. Tom himself has stated several times that he loves Agent 007 and would be happy to try on his famous costume. That would certainly be cool. Unfortunately, however, the chances are slim. There are hundreds of actors in the world who can play this role. And Daniel Craig is doing pretty well so far. And the reasoning about, who will be the next Bond, is something like a national entertainment here in Britain. Therefore, I am not particularly flattering myself. Hiddleston is seriously into foreign languages. Apart from his passion for acting, languages are almost the most important passion in Tom's life. He speaks fluently in Greek, Spanish, French, Italian and can say a few things in Russian. Tom's favorite historical period is the era of the Wild West. Acting is my life and my passion. But if I didn't have the opportunity to act in films or play in the theater, I probably would have tried to become a cowboy. The point here is not at all a nomadic lifestyle or a cool hat. For some reason it seems to me that this is mine. Actually, I would like to live in the days of the Wild West. I would have got myself a horse, called him Balthazar and, you won't believe it, would be friends with the Indians. Tom Hiddleston is a UNICEF goodwill ambassador. The actor took up the problems of charity in earnest about 10 years ago. And in 2013, he took part in a big tour of Guinea as part of the UNICEF mission. The purpose of the trip is to draw attention to the situation in West Africa, where about 2 million children die of hunger every year. I am not involved in the production of fortified milk for infants, I do not arrange vaccinations, and I do not organize the delivery of medicines. Unfortunately, I am not able to do this. But I can talk about the problem of hunger. So why don't I do this? This is my contribution to saving lives. He declares that he simply does not have time for a serious relationship. It's a sin to complain about the inattention of the female sex to the actor. His first relationship began to take shape as early as 10 years old, it was then that he first kissed a classmate with whom he was incredibly deeply in love. However, Tom prefers not to tell the media about his more serious novels. Nevertheless, it is known that he dated actress Suzanne Fielding for three years, and in 2016, singer Taylor Swift became his girlfriend. Dating with her lasted for several months, but the matter did not come to registration of the relationship. The problem is, I'm a terrible perfectionist. 
No girl can stand it. I involuntarily compare all my loved ones with my mother, and it, as you yourself understand, is always not in their favor. However, I am single for a completely different reason. I simply don't have time for a family and I don't have the strength to take on this responsibility. Besides, loneliness is the most reliable way to success, that's why I live on my own, without looking back at romantic relationships. Tom Hiddleston calls himself a pro-feminist. The actor often says that he was raised by strong women. My mother and sisters have incredible inner strength. They are able to solve any problem and achieve everything themselves. This is my ideal woman. Therefore, when I hear the expression, weaker sex, I find it funny. I believe that everyone who knows how to work on themselves, who is generous and independent, has at least the right to respect. Personally, I admire such people, and it doesn't matter who is in front of me, a woman or a man. To discount what women do by calling them that weaker sex is really stupid. So yes, in that sense I am a pro-feminist. That's all for today. If you liked the video, like it, subscribe and press the bell to be the first to know about the new issue coming out.